Hey everyone, Nicholas stock has been dropping like a rock due to a few factors such as the GM Badger deal falling through and Nikola having billions of dollars worth of stock becoming unlocked today. And on top of all this well-earned negative press Nikola is getting, you have articles coming out like this one from Business Insider titled, Nikola's 25% dive is a good buy opportunity because the company's decision to abandon the Badger pickup means it can focus more on semi-trucks, JP Morgan says. I honestly can't believe Business Insider would have the nerve to print something like this. Well, come to think of it, actually I can because I've been covering them for a while now and they put out some pretty horrible stuff, like their video on why hydrogen cars will be Tesla's biggest threat, where they got almost every single thing they could have gotten wrong. I find this article and others like it to be extremely irresponsible and sometimes dangerous for some investors. But before we get into why, if you appreciate my in-depth coverage of Nikola Motors, consider subscribing because it's free and it helps me make more videos. With that out of the way, let's get into it. This article was published late last night, and if you would have taken the advice that this is a good buying opportunity, you'd be down an extra 15% as of this morning. But let's go back to the title, because although it's clearly clickbait, it also gets something very wrong. They say that Nikola's 25% dive is a good buying opportunity because the company's decision to abandon the Badger pickup means it can focus more on semi-trucks. And let's get one thing straight here. We cannot say that Nikola decided to abandon the Badger. Calling it Nikola's decision that GM fell through is just flat out wrong. We can't say 100% definitively that GM backed out of the original deal that had the Badger and the equity stake and that sort of thing, but in that exact same vein, we can't say that Nikola decided to back out either. So speaking in purely definitive terms, we don't know who's fault it is that the deal didn't go through. So the title is actually wrong on a factual front. But also if we just go to what we know is common sense, and it might not be 100% provable, so I'll just call it my opinion. In my opinion, GM was the one that backed out of the deal. Nikola was at their mercy. It was all in GM's hands the whole time, and I think everybody knows that. So titling the article as if Nikola had a say about abandoning the Badger is deceptive right on its face. And this is one of the things I find most upsetting about the large large current media outlets is because they obviously have hundreds of thousands of readers and they'll put out articles like this one calling Nikola a good buying opportunity from Business Insiders or like from Barron's a week ago that was titled buy Nikola stock because it's when not if hydrogen tech is adopted and a lot of people see those articles trust the sources and buy Nikola stock and I'm not saying they're doing this but telling thousands of people to go buy this stock can and has artificially raised the stock price even if it's only temporary temporarily. And as we know with Nikola, that could be all they need. You as an investor and individual need to think for yourself. What motivation could Business Insiders and JP Morgan have by putting out a bullish article on Nikola stock the day before billions of dollars worth of that stock is unlocked and can be sold? And speaking of that stock lockup, if you're a regular at this channel, you already know it, but to sum it up for people who are new, first off, Hi, glad you're here. Second off, Nikola Motors has a bunch of shares, and I mean 161 million shares of Nikola stock that today, right today, are becoming available for sale. They've been locked up due to the investors not being able to sell for the first 180 days, and there are a few more moving parts, but the main thing to know is that while all the craziness with the Hindenburg Report and Trevor Milton leaving slash getting fired and all that sort of thing was going on, these investors could not sell their shares even if they wanted to. And now for the first time, they will be able to sell. So this is an incredibly volatile week for Nikola and will continue to be volatile for who knows how long. And yet you have publications not addressing in their Nikola is a good buying opportunity article all these critical details that you need to know if you're looking to invest. I'm not saying Business Insider is doing this, but we know in the past that the media has intentionally manipulated stock prices to their advantage by putting out biased articles. The media knows how that sort of thing works. So it is something you need to think about when you're considering investing. Investing. The Business Insider article at the bottom states, General Motors' more modest commitment to Nikola will likely weigh on investor sentiment in the short term, especially as 161 million shares are due for a lockup expiry this week, meaning that insiders of Nikola that have been paid in equity finally have their chance to sell their shares. And okay, I'm glad that they put that in there, but the bottom of the article isn't the right place for critical information like that. And also they say the lockup is expiring this week, but it was expiring in less than 12 hours from the publication of that 
that article. If you're an investor, you might wanna know that sort of thing. I know I would. All right, but let's look at the actual body of the article. It says, Nikola and General Motors entered into a revised deal on Monday that included the two companies shifting its focus away from the Badger truck and instead towards the Class 7 and Class 8 semi trucks. And if I read that and I didn't know anything about Nikola, I would think, oh, GM and Nikola are going to be partnering to produce Nikola's semi trucks. And that really isn't the case at all. Yes, GM and Nikola did enter into a non binding MOU or Memorandum of Understanding, but it's not the two companies shifting its focus. It's GM backing out almost entirely. The only thing that GM will be involved with is providing their Hydrotech, which is their hydrogen fuel cell parts. But even with that, GM is just going to be a parts supplier for Nikola. And not only that, but the MOU is non-binding, so there is no reason that either company can't just walk away with virtually no penalty. So saying the two companies are shifting their focus is not even remotely accurate. They even state later on in the article that the deal looks like a conventional arm's length cost plus supply contract for General Motors Hydrotech system, JP Morgan said, adding that it can eventually include the Ultium battery system from General Motors as well. So if they admit that it's an arm's length cost plus supply contract in their own article, why are they saying that Nikola and GM are shifting their focus? It's just ridiculous. But let's think of what that actually means as far as IP that Nikola has, because the deal does tell us something. Nikola Motors has been developing hydrogen fuel powered semi trucks since 2016. Hydrogen has been at the heart of the company for these four long years. And yet, after having hydrogen be their sole focus, they still were unable to come up with a system that's actually competent enough to use, so they're going with GM's Hydrotech. And I got some pushback yesterday for saying that about Nikola, and the example used against me was that it's similar to Tesla because with the original Tesla Roadster, they used a Lotus chassis and they used a Borg Wagner gearbox. So the argument brought to me yesterday is that Tesla used third party parts for their first car and look how things turned out for them. And I hear that argument and I'm sympathetic towards it, but there are a few major your differences in my eyes. Here's where I have a problem with that logic. Yes, Tesla did use a bunch of third party suppliers for some of their parts, but here's the thing. Tesla wasn't trying to prove that they could build a good chassis or gearbox. Tesla was trying to prove that they could make a good electric car. Tesla was hyper focused on the motor and the battery system. There are a lot of similarities between an electric car and a traditional internal combustion engine, so Tesla wasn't going to spend its limited engineering time reinventing parts that are so similar between regular and EVs for their first generation product. They were focused on the things that set EVs apart, and that's why the battery system and motor were so important. And when you look at what Nikola is trying to do that sets it apart, it's using hydrogen as a fuel source for their semi truck. And what do they do? They outsource the main difference between them and the competition. And that, at least to me, is a night and day difference. Because I really wouldn't care if Nikola bought a chassis and suspension and windows and all that sort of thing from third party suppliers. Those things aren't what makes Nikola different. What makes them different is using hydrogen. And by using a third party supplier for their quote unquote competitive advantage makes them no longer have a competitive advantage. I haven't seen anything in the deal that would stop GM from in the future if hydrogen semis turned out to be successful, just taking the Hydrotech that they sell to Nikola and Nikola is dependent on and then turning it around and making their own semis with this now proven technology. Because GM isn't just some regular supplier that only makes Hydrotech systems. They are fully capable of making semi trucks if they had the desire and saw profit in it. So if you're Nikola, that should be a genuine concern. All right, moving on from that, they end the article with, but a pullback in Nikola could be a buying opportunity, JP Morgan said. And I've addressed this before, but I'll address it again because it's important. In everyday life, you might see a product like a TV and it costs 400 bucks. And then later on in the day, you see that same TV and it's 50% off and now it's only 200 bucks. So now you think to yourself, wow, that's a good value because you're getting this TV for half the price. And unfortunately, that line of thinking carries over for a lot of people into the stock market. And in the stock market, the same logic doesn't really apply. Just because something is 25% less expensive today than it was yesterday doesn't make it a good buy. A stock can and regularly is discounted by 25% and it's still overvalued. I'm not saying this is the case with Nikola stock. You should do your own research and decide for yourself. But what I am saying is that the idea that this stock is cheaper today than it was yesterday, therefore it's a good buying opportunity, is incredibly dangerous and will get you into trouble. Stay safe out there.